Yeah, okay. you know, the internet is, you know, known for its patience and understanding. Right, so, right. And this is, this is going to be nasty. So in this video, I'm teaching my dad to play guitar. Uh, for those of you who don't know, last week I put out a video about like the ultimate beginner practice routine, the practice routine that I would put together for somebody uh, who's starting from zero and you're trying to progress as quickly as possible. Uh, my dad is a beginner and we're kind of trying to see over the course of a year, you know, how fast can you progress if you don't spend a lot of time screwing around trying to find the right lesson videos or trying to find a good instructor. I like to think my dad has access to a decent instructor already from the beginning. So we're trying to see how good one can get in a year. Uh, everybody, I'd like to introduce my dad. Hi, Internet. How's it going? Yeah, I, I got guitar tricks. Uh, I downloaded that, so I have access to good guitar instruction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Editing Kevin from the future here. I want to say something that I didn't say when we were originally recording. This video is a little different from the videos I normally make. I usually try to explain one concept uninterrupted in the way that's easiest to understand. This video isn't going to be exactly like that. It's more of a conversation. Really, it's a look into a guitar lesson. So, like any real conversation or guitar lesson, there's going to be plenty of questions and tangents, and I think that that's actually where the value in the video lies. You know, I can't give everybody who watches the videos one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons, but I'm betting my dad isn't the only beginner who's ever had these questions, so hopefully the next best thing is letting you look into a guitar lesson I give to my dad. We're both a little clunky at the beginning. You know, doing a guitar lesson on camera for the first time is an awkward thing, but we loosen up as the video goes on, and I think the information and advice in this video is gold, so bear with us. Okay, back to the video. So, Dad, obviously I already know the answer to this, but just for everybody starting, you know, I think the the thing to, to think about when you're first starting guitar is what songs you want to learn. I think, you know, everybody comes to guitar uh, because you want to play music, you want to play songs you like. So what are the you know, handful of, like, marquee songs you kind of want to learn in the first year. Yeah, um, I mean, basically, I, I want to become competent at playing guitar. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, yeah, if, if I could play some of the songs, you know, there's all the obvious high-end songs mm -hmm. uh, on guitar, the Hotel California, Sultans of Swing. Well, you can't play Hotel California on YouTube. Or That's true, yeah. Don right. Henley comes and beats you up. Yeah, yeah, I'm scared of Don. But, you know, one song, this is this is super obscure, um, that I just think would be so cool to be able to do is, and it's a Christmas song, it, it's Brian Setzer's Angels We Have Heard on High. We, you know, he does oh, yeah, yeah. Brian Setzer mm -hmm. uh, Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. And when he's playing the guitar on that, it's like he's turning the guitar into his voice. It's, yeah, he, yeah. He, he's using the guitar to, to vocalize. Where, where normally they're singing, he's going, you know, nah, nah. It's, it, I just think that is so impressive, and I think that would be wicked to be able to do that. And plus, I love the tone of Brian Setzer's guitar. To be honest, mm -hmm. that might be a little ambitious for the first year, but we'll see how, how far you can get. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That. I'm sure. You I'm know? saying that's that would be the dream. Yeah, That yeah, would yeah. be like, if I could do that, then you know, I'd quit my job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if I could just play competently, mm -hmm. um, you know, go into a guitar store, pull a guitar down off the wall and act like I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be able to play some of the simpler songs, release some melodies, you know. Wagon wheel is the the one thing I've worked on a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's just some of the easier tunes like that. that yeah. That'd be awesome. I, I should say, for those of you who don't know, the uh, beginner practice routine I recommended, uh, and it, this is for somebody who's starting off at zero, uh, I, I, I sort of recommended that you practice 40 minutes a day. I think most people kind of have 40 minutes, you know. They're like, you know, obviously three hours would be better if you can mm -hmm. stay focused for three hours. But like, I think 40 minutes is more actionable for most people. Because not only do most folks have 40 minutes, minutes if they're being honest, mm -hmm. but also I think that's where the point of diminishing returns happens. So for 40 minutes, I think you should spend 20 minutes, half that time, practicing a song that you want to learn. Um, and if you're an absolute beginner, you spend 10 minutes, uh, a quarter of the time, practicing a chord changing exercise uh, that I have, a, I have a video about and I explained in the previous video. We'll kind of go over it briefly here. And 10 minutes practicing the spider exercise. Uh, so... I guess the question is, have you been doing that or do I need to kill you? Um, no, I have been doing it. Yeah, I found the spider, ex spider exercise to be really difficult. Yeah. I thought it was going to be sort of simple, just mm -hmm. tedious, but it was both tedious and very difficult. Nice. Um, um, I, really, I really can't express how much I hated that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, the, the core changing exercise uh, I, I found a lot easier and, mm -hmm. and more enjoyable. Um, the one thing, you know, when... Uh, 
you were uh, learning to play guitar. Yeah. Um, and were was living at home, and the guitars were all there. Mm -hmm. You know, I would pick them up and mess around with them. Right. And along the way, I learned the one thing I learned was the G, D, uh, E, and C chords. Okay. For wagon wheel. Yeah. And I could kind of you know sort of hack my way through that uh, just a bit. Mm -hmm. So the chord changing there um, was much easier with, okay. with, with the metronome. Oh, and I was going to ask you. Um, I used the, the Google metronome that you were talking about in, in your video, yeah. and then I found one online on YouTube uh, that was a talking uh, metronome where it says one, two, three, four. What I found is with the talking metronome, it was much easier. Uh, I didn't have to spend any uh, time trying to count. I would just block out the one with the guitar mm -hmm. and two, three, four, two, three, four. That's yeah. all I would hear. Yeah. I would just hear the guitar and the two, three, four. I found that much okay. easier. Um, I don't know if that's cheating. I was going to ask you, is that like, is that... Not really. Should I be learning to count the one, two, three, four? You should, but the reason I say it's not cheating is with that exercise particularly, the point isn't to like become a a master at rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. at, or, you know, counting, but you know, if you can, as sort of a side effect, improve your rhythm with that exercise, is great. But really the, 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 pur the purpose is to uh, get better changing chords. It's just to give you an improvement matrix. Uh, the... The exercise that my dad is talking about, I, I, you know, like I said, I'll have a video that I already made about it. It's a deep dive into it, and that'll be linked. But basically, you dial up a metronome, and you just count uh, a regular four count. And on the one, on the downbeat, you play the chord. If it's a G, for example, it'll be one, two, three, four. And then you change, say it's E minor or whatever, and again, one, two, three, four. Uh, the, the, the key to this exercise is that you don't play on the two, three, and four. You only play on the downbeat. Uh, and the reason for that is that it gives you time to change. So instead of playing, instead of letting it ring out, like, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it gives you time to change the chords. It gives you time to get your hand in position. If you were to let it ring out, then it kind of doesn't matter how fast or slow you go because you're still trying to change chords pretty much instantly. And that doesn't give you any kind of an improvement uh, you know, path because it's just, the standard is instant. But this gives you three beats to get your hand in position. So that, just so you know, that's the, uh, uh, the chord changing exercise that you're talking about. Here's the thing that I found frustrating with that mm -hmm. is it, I can do that with a metronome like a champ. Yeah. I, I sped it up to 100 and I was changing between four chords. I, I just, th those four chords yeah. that we talked about, mm -hmm. just going through them, no problem still relatively simple yeah if i actually try to play a song then i mean i could get a running start to get into a c chord it's you know i gotta back up i gotta stretch yeah. it's 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 i can't do it when i'm actually playing a song i can't mm -hmm. change chords smoothly but do do, do you know doing the metronome thing mm. it's it, it's it seems super easy yeah that's i think that's probably a mental problem i used to I don't know if you remember this, this was years ago when I was first learning to play Layla, and not the acoustic version, but the original version. That was everything I could do to start that song. I, I would just sit here like... Yeah, I, I just couldn't do it, you know what I mean? And I think that, um, like I said, I, I just think that's more of a mental issue. And, and the way to, to get over that is to just spend more time with the song. That's one of those things where you really just can't replace hours spent with the guitar, you know? The thing you might could do is whatever song you're trying to play, I guess Wagon Wheel. Right. Um, try to play along with it. If you can find a version on YouTube, you know, YouTube lets you play the video at different speeds. Right. You can slow it down. Uh, right. That might kind of make it a little more approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, but th that's really, like I said, th th there's <clears throat> not a whole lot of, like, silver bullets there. This is the super weird thing. The slower I play it, the harder it is. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That uh, is... I mean, if I, I can I can do this. I mean, if I, if I do it slow, I'm gonna, it, I, I invariably mess up my strumming. Yeah. But when I go faster, and this is probably going to just be, I'm probably just going to destroy this, but. Right. Um, no, never mind. We'll just edit this yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try one more time. Yeah. Ah! I see what you're saying, though. I, it, it seemed like you were getting the chord changes a little faster. You yeah. Know? That's an indication of a rhythm problem. That's where the talking metronome might be holding you back. It's harder to play something slower than it is to play it fast, you know? 
that is a uh, that's an issue with landing precisely on the beat that you need to land on, you know? Mm-hmm. And the way to do that, the way to improve there is to get better at counting rhythm. But the, the purpose of the core changing exercise is not to become, you know, a, 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 a rhythm legend. It's to become good at changing chords, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, w- we can retroactively uh, practice the, uh, the, the rhythm separately. And that's kind of, the, I guess, the, the value that the audience can kind of get out of the video is seeing that, okay, you know, you had this problem arise, and then I'll help you kind of tweak that for the future, for this next week with the next practice routine, you know? Right. Speaking of that, you know, when we talked about doing this video mm-hmm. uh, and doing these, I thought, yeah, that, that sounds like fun. I'll come hang out with Kevin, learn to play guitar. Hanging out with me is fun. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, fortunately for you, you get to hang out with me. So, mm-hmm. But what I didn't consider... Uh, is that uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna come in Kevin's studio and we're gonna play with the cameras and the lights it'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I didn't think through the whole thousands of people watching me just suck at guitar. Didn't think that all the way through. Well, I deal with that problem every week. That's you true. Know? That's actually my secret is uh, I'm not very good at guitar. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, just I, I know. really good at it. You know. <laughs> I'm just good at explaining this stuff. Right. So I'm praying to God nobody ever play never nobody ever sees me in person play guitar. Right. Because yeah. then everybody's gonna find out, wait, this dude sucks. You know, the internet is, you know, known for its patience and understanding. Right. So right. And this is this is gonna be nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh because I like to torture you, um, and I and I and I do want you to suck, like you said, in front of my currently thirty six thousand subscribers. Thank you, guys. Show me where you're at with the spider routine. Okay. Have you been using a metronome for that? <clears throat> no. Okay. Just show me where you're at. Start, like, okay. at the first fret. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And by the time I get to the end of this year, 36,000 will be below 20. Right. <laughs> first question that I said to ask you. Yeah. I cannot fret this uh-huh. and then with my pinky without moving down. Yeah, you got to You got to struggle through that all right yeah that, you gotta, that's what i try to do and it's just yeah. it's just brutal the thing that'll help you with that and the first thing i noticed there is um when you're doing the exercise mm-hmm. uh you want to keep all your fingers down as you're going up so like look at the way i do this okay uh the tendency what you're doing and the tendency for a lot of beginners is to do this Right, that's probably closer to what I've been doing. Yeah, try to keep your fingers down, okay? okay. It'll be hard. Um, counterintuitively, the key to this is to not push so hard on the back of the neck with your thumb. Okay. Yeah. If you try to just focus on relaxing your hand, um, you should, I'm not saying don't push on the back of your neck. Obviously, that's how you create leverage to play guitar, but like, sure. the, the key to this is relaxing your hand. Um, but try to keep those fingers down as you go up. The, Next question. Yeah. The thumb behind it mm-hmm. uh, is it, what's the proper, you know, uh, wrist position here and thumb position because I find my thumb kind of wants to go over here a lot. Yeah, especially yeah. Especially when I'm getting down here, I'm my thumb's you know, way out here like this. The uh, the classical players will light me up for saying this. You have a little bit of leeway here. You, there's some room to kind of do what you want and whatever most was whatever is most comfortable. <clears throat> like the textbook advice is to keep your thumb pointing up. So if you you know just like, kind of give the guitar a, a, a thumbs up there, right. and then just keep it oriented the same the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing that you really want to fight against is flaring it out towards the headstock so much. The that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. Try not to do that. And the way to the way to to focus on that <clears throat> instead of just thinking about your thumb position, mm-hmm. try to focus on your wrist position. You want a straight line to be drawn from your elbow through this knuckle. Okay. Um, if you can do that, that'll help your thumb See, position greatly. Just automatically, just doing that, there's my thumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, right. a, it's a hard habit to break, but once you get it, um, it'll be a lot easier to fret notes with your fourth finger, your pinky. That's what I want you to work on this week with the spider exercise. Okay. Try to focus on uh, keeping the hand relaxed, keeping your wrist straight and your thumb kind of in the same spot. Mm-hmm. That way, you can keep your fingers down as you go up. Okay. Yeah. When you go, when you, when you come back the other way, do you just lift them? You just. Uh, yeah. There's my thumb flaring out. You know, you just go. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, it just I 
so you kind of understand like where you're going in the long run with this. But in the long run, you want to focus on efficiency okay. uh, with, uh, with your hands. Sometimes it's called like economy of movement. Um, and you don't want to be doing like lifting your fingers up so far away because when you're actually playing gotcha. a song, you know, you want them to be nearby. Don't focus on that right now. Okay, okay right yeah. now, just be able to play it cleanly. Try to keep your fingers down when you're going right. up and then we'll get to that later. Second question, or third or fourth, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Is there any way in hell you're supposed to be able to fret the E down here without muting the A? Uh, yeah, technically yes. Or does that ever actually come up? Yeah, I was going to say, technically yes. I mean, I, as somebody who's interested in teaching you good technique, the answer is, yeah, you should be able to, to fret that note without hitting the A. Uh, as somebody who is interested in uh, you having a real world understanding of guitar, that's almost never going to come up. Because if you were actually playing a solo up here, yeah. uh, the thing that you're going to have to fight against is trying to play notes without open strings ringing out. Mm -hmm. And so if your fingers are kind of muting the other strings anyway, that's actually a good thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we talked about the uh, spider exercise. Uh, let's just, and I know we touched on it earlier, but let's just officially talk about the uh, chord chain exercise. I want to see how you do that. All right, 100 beats a minute, talking metronome. Let's see the chord changing exercise. All right. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. All right, you're good. You got that. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. Uh, have you been trying that with any other chords? Yeah. Just I, those two? No, no I, I did the four. So I did the... Uh, okay. The, the, the D and the C. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, let's uh, let's talk about how to like increase speed on this exercise. All right. Um, I, I I haven't talked about this on the channel in a while, but in the video where I uh, originally explained this exercise, I talk about um, sort of the the progression of difficulty that you want to do here, um, and eventually you want to get to where you can do this blazingly fast. The idea behind yeah, increasing your speed is that you want to start off just kind of as a warm-up with a speed that's totally comfortable for you all right so it's it's not even challenging at all okay. and this is just to kind of get your mind in the in the mode of counting your hand in the mode of doing it you know and then maybe maybe for you let's like 80 beats a minute mm -hmm. if you were playing 100 pretty comfortably you know yeah and then you want to do uh some practice at, at a speed that you know you can do but it's a little bit more of a challenge maybe this is 100 beats a minute right uh, after that, you want to spend th the vast majority of, of your practice time here. And, you know, if I recommended practicing this exercise for like 10 minutes, you want to spend like six or seven minutes on, um, on a speed that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. So, and I'm just guessing here, but maybe this is like 115, 120 beats a minute for you, right? Mm -hmm. And then for just a little bit, and this is demoralizing, I know, but for just a little bit, you want to practice a speed that you genuinely cannot do, and you have to make a genuine effort to do it. I know that's de demoralizing, mm -hmm. but you have to be, you know, you totally out of your comfort zone. And you don't have to do this for long. Doing this for like a minute or two minutes when you actually focus on it will be plenty. Well, I do the spider exercise first, so I'm pretty demoralized. So Okay. <laughs> In fact, you know what? I'm going to show you what that looks like. I want to show everybody that uh, I'm mortal because I know it's easy to think that I'm ridiculously impressive and beautiful. Right. Yeah. yeah of course. I'm going to play D major 7 here, and then I'm going to play D major 7 here. <clears throat> I'm just going to go between those two, and I'm going to change chords every beat. That's the modification I'm making to do it harder. I'm going to start off at 120. Damn. All right. Never mind. I'll start off at 100 beats a minute. This would be like the comfortable speed, hopefully. Settle down, Hoss. Uh, Justin Teaches Guitar is a good app, too, if you guys are interested in that. Here's 80 beats a minute. I'm changing chords every beat, dude. <laughs> All right. It's like a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I can mostly do it, you know? Mm. That's what you say. Yeah, dude, I, honestly, I'm very humbled right now. <laughs> I'm tempted to edit this out. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to I'm gonna do 90 beats a minute to do the speed that I genuinely can't do. Mm -hmm. And um, 
hopefully this won't be so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But um, what I want you to notice here, I'm going to be like, the chords aren't going to be super clean. I might be behind the beat a little bit, but for, you know, a, just a couple of bars to demonstrate, uh, there's a genuine effort. It's not like I'm just conceding that I suck at this. You know what I mean? Right. My, my honest goal is to get to 90 beats a minute. You know what I mean? All right. And ho hopefully this is what that looks like. Damn, kind of killed that. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. You want to try it? Yeah, go back to 90 beats per minute. Okay. All right, are you going to do, you know, doing every chord, are you? Yeah. Okay, all right. Good luck, man. All right. Here we go. Well, that didn't, that didn't go that well. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, 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 should, I, I did do it every other beat. I was doing it on the one of the three when I was practicing. Just, just okay. messing around. all right, cool. To kind of push myself a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Try, um, yeah, and that that that, that yeah, wasn't great, but it was. What I would what I would say to that is try to uh, try to increase your speed before you increase the the playing it on a different beat. Yeah, just because that's a smaller increment of difficulty. Because mm -hmm. when you play it on the one and the three, uh, instead of just the one, mm -hmm. you're effectively doubling the speed. You know. Right. So if you just continue to play just on the one, but you increase the speed by like you know ten or fifteen beats a minute. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, the G and the, the G and the E uh, were easy because you just move that one finger to there. And yeah. So that that that's that's a pretty easy. Oh yeah, move. yeah. But if, if you bring the other chords into it, then yeah, then it gets harder. It gets harder. Yeah. yeah. Back to my masochism. Yes. Here's a here's a hundred beats a minute of me struggling. Okay, so some of that wasn't super clean, you know? No, that was bad. I don't want to hear that. That's kind of what it should look like. You know, you have to mm -hmm. really try to do it. And you can sacrifice, and I, I, I hesitate to say this to, like, you know, everybody's watching, but you can sacrifice a little bit of technique there to, to, to try to get to that speed. Understand the majority of your practice should be, like, really clean, right on beat at a lower speed that's a little outside of your comfort zone, but you really, really want to push yourself just a little bit towards the end of your practice routine. So, uh, that reminded me, going back to this, uh, the spider exercise, mm -hmm. you know, like if, if, you, if you muddy the note, yeah. should you, you know, should you go back and get it clean? Um, now I'm doing the thing you said not to do. Yeah. Instead of going back, I would try to restart, just restart on that string. Just restart that string? But, yeah. But get through it clean is the point. Yeah. So we talked about the spider exercise. Uh, we went in depth with that. We talked about the chord changing exercise. I think most of the value the audience will get from this video uh, was there. Because I think that the stuff you ran into in, in the, with those exercises mm -hmm. are sort of like the, like the common problems that I would say most people sort of you know, deal with it as far as, you know, lifting your, your fingers or having rhythm troubles or whatever. Uh, so if you want my pointers on that stuff, uh, there you go. There's my very specific pointers. Uh, but to round out the, the stuff I told you to practice, uh, let's hear your song, uh, Wagon Wheel. Okay. All right. All right, Internet. Be nice. Close. Yes. Yeah. Right, hang, hang on. I, I can do it better than that. Yeah. Can't do it good, but I can do it better than that. It, it's really not that bad. Don't get discouraged. Oh, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Seriously, uh, for, for for on camera, that's really really decent. All right. You, you're not. I don't yeah, want you to think that you suck as much as you probably feel. Like you. <clears throat> no, I'm. I, that that was just god awful. Well. And I'm marginally better than that. And I'm still, still terrible, but marginally better than that when I'm not on camera. Okay, but it is your first week. Piss me off. You know. Then the question is like, what exactly are you doing? It are you doing wrong? You know, what are the like the actionable things that you can do? Mm -hmm. The way I think about it, I think there's really three things that I'm noticing, like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is a, a chord problem, and the other two are problems that every guitar player, every level faces when you're first learning a new song. Uh, let's address the chord problem first. All right. So, 
when you're playing the, the, the six string chords, so the, the, the chords that uh, involve all six strings, you know, G and E minor, mm -hmm. uh, you're pretty much good because, you know, you're playing all six strings, it's fine. Right. When you're moving on to the C and the D, one thing I'm noticing is you are, uh, I think you're struggling to mute the low strings on those chords or to miss them. I'm not struggling, I'm just not even doing it or even cons <laughs> or even attempting to. <laughs> right. The D I tried, I, I, I know you're supposed to say the, the yeah. plus four on D and I try to kind of aim that way, uh -huh. but I'm not, I am not, I'm not muting anything. And the C, um, I completely forget that, yeah, you're supposed to mute the E. Yeah. So. Well. All right. Yeah. My, uh, well, my, this is kind of an easy problem to fix, to be honest. Yeah. The, which is good news. The, uh, the C is, is the easiest because you can just bring your thumb around. And this is how, there are other ways to avoid low strings when you're strumming chords, but I think bringing your thumb around to mute the low E string is just the easiest. And I'm muting the... That's fine. The heel of my palm is... Yeah. You, know, you don't have to have it perfect right now, but yeah. just focus on that this gotcha. next week. You know what I mean? And, uh, and and the reason I recommend that muting technique instead of trying to avoid it with your right hand or maybe trying to, like, you know, mute with your the fleshy part of your palm and then strike the strings or something right. is because as you progress with guitar and as you progress as a musician, one of the skills you got to get really good at is multitasking. Mm -hmm. So uh, people who aspire to be, like, uh, singers... Um, as you know, accompanying themselves on guitar while they're singing, mm -hmm. this is really important for them. But it's important for everybody because you know you, you might be counting or thinking about the the rest of the harmony of what the band is doing or whatever. You know, um, you don't want to be spending any energy thinking about okay, where should I you know strike with my right hand when I'm strumming this chord? It's easy just to say okay, I'm just gonna give it a, give it a big swipe, all six strings. <laughs> Just like I might for a G chord or an E minor chord, mm -hmm. uh, and just muting with your left hand allows you to do that. Right. Um, as far as the D chord goes, the advice here is a little harder because you can only mute one string that a string would still mute at, would still bring out. You know, mm -hmm. um, you can only mute one string with your thumb. I mean, but the thing that I want you to see here is don't be afraid to really exaggerate aiming for just the high strings. If you get to a point where you're seriously only strumming the top two, just the B and the D, uh, the B and the E string. Mm -hmm. it still pretty much sounds like a D chord in the real world. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So don't be afraid to like really, really exaggerate aiming for the high strings on a D chord. Okay. There you go. All right. So practice that stuff this week to improve the chords. The other two problems that I would point to, uh, the, the difference between you and the recording of Wagon Wheel mm -hmm. is uh, it really comes down to rhythm and dynamics, okay? And these are, like, everybody struggles with this, okay? Even I struggle with this on songs that I'm, I'm just learning and I'm f just getting into. Um, people often say, like, ah, oh, it just doesn't feel right. Like, I just have that, that feel barrier between where I am and where I, I want the song to be. I think if you were to try to quantify that, really it comes down to rhythm and dynamics, uh, the way to fix the rhythm is easy. Just get good at counting in your head. We talked about the talking metronome right. and being able to you know, subdivide beats and stuff. Just get good at counting in your head. That'll mostly fix the rhythm stuff. Practice with a met metronome. Uh, to fix the dynamic stuff, that takes a little bit... That's one of those things that, again, just takes hours with the guitar. You know what I mean? It gets a little bit more comfortable. If I were to play uh, uh, the, the song, it would be something like... Something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm doing there, and, and, uh, a skill gap that you'll bridge eventually, is knowing when to make it loud and when to make it quiet, which is basically what dynamics is, you know? Right. Um, notice that on the first beat, like on the first down strum of a chord, and I'm, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm doing it without thinking about it, which is where you'll get eventually. But, uh, you know, I'm making that a little bit louder, the down beat. And then the rest of the strums are, they get pulled back a little bit, you know, and I'm emphasizing the chord change. Kind of listen for that. Or whatever it is. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, the, the real uh, way to solve that problem is just spend more time with the guitar. Okay. So, yeah. there you go. <clears throat> All right. Sweet. So... 
to recap the modifications to the practice routine, the, the modifications to the stuff you're doing. Um, focus on those uh, on those chord improvements on wagon wheel. We talked about you know muting stuff and avoiding certain strings. Focus on the rhythm and dynamics. Uh, for the spider exercise, try to focus on your wrist position, thumb position, and keeping your fingers down as you go up, you know? Uh, and for the chord changing exercise, more the same, but try to speed it up a little bit, basically. Right. Um, and that's really the only modifications I would make. The one thing that you might should do if you want to kind of mm, preview week three mm -hmm. is uh, try to, especially if you're doing the chord changing exercise, do part of it where you're focusing just on changing chords, you know? And do part of it where you're really focusing on the rhythm. And the way I would attack that is do part of it with the talking metronome, because mm -hmm. that's easy, because the rhythm is kind of taken care of for you, you know? Right. And that's all about changing chords. Right. And then do part of it with the regular sort of, I don't know, blank metronome, mm -hmm. just the regular click, you know? Right. And try to think in your heart, right, one, two, three, four. Work on your rhythm that way. Okay. Yeah. That'll kind of differentiate the practice between just being a chord changing yeah. master and a rhythm master. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much the video. That's uh, hopefully, Dad, you got some like value out of it. And uh, that's how I would. There's a little tweaks that we talked about. Is how I would practice. I would I would alter the practice routine for the next week. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, thinking real hard about doing uh, a week to week video as shorts. And I know I don't normally do short form stuff, um, but I think that might work really well because if you watch this, you know, you kind of got the, you know, the format, you know, basically just going to check in on dad real fast. How much, how bad I am at this. Yeah. Um, kind of offer, uh, the, you know, some advice. And if it's a short form thing, you know, I'll cut that down to just like the, the really important piece of advice. Um, and then how to alter the practice routine for the next week. You guys can follow along week to week. That'll be easy. And, um, Every now and again, maybe every month or every quarter or something, uh, we'll do a like a, a, a long form sort of checkup video. It'll be very much like this. Just you'll be slightly better. Um, but that's it. Any? Uh, do you have any other questions as far as music theory or, you know, life? I have so much to teach you. Um, I, I really wasn't paying attention. What was that again? Yeah. Um, no, I do have a question from from the uh, the practice video you did. You were talking about. Um, you know, a measure of music. And I kind of know what a measure of music is, you know, contextually, but oh, yeah. I don't really, I mean, I couldn't explain it to somebody, so oh, yeah. maybe uh, you could explain it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you were telling me about that when the video dropped. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize to everybody who's just in the dark on what a measure is. But uh, a measure, all it is, it, it's sort of the standard unit of music that we that we use to measure a song, you know. When, you, uh, when you're a... a member of the masses, you know, just the unwashed heathens. You mm -hmm. think that songs are measured in seconds, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but when you become a guitar playing god, mm -hmm. you understand that music is divided up into measures. And all that is, is when you think about the four beat, you know, counting music one, two, three, four, uh, a measure is just a, a group of those four beats. You okay. just group those together. It, it, it becomes more useful when you think about like how to feel a song, because if you were like playing with other people, for example, or even just practicing by yourself, you could say, okay, I want to start at this measure, and instead of being like, I want to start at 45.4 seconds into the song, you'd be like, I want to start on the first measure of the chorus or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that, that was it. I think that was the only question I had from, from that. Okay, cool. There you go. Well, I uh, hope you guys got value out of the video. Like I said, um, this is, I'm trying to figure out how to scale giving specific advice. And I think that right now, being a beginner, the advice isn't as specific as some people might think. So hopefully you guys got something from this and thank you for watching.